It's your fault that your husband disappeared. I heard you didn't cook enough meals and had a terrible attitude. He may have already taken his own life because you pushed him away. No, no way. My husband Jackson suddenly disappeared less than a year after we got married. His friends and colleagues blamed me. But I have no idea what happened. What the hell is going on? I have a younger sister, April, eight years younger than me. My parents always favored my sister, who is friendly and charming. Maya, I'd like to try your hamburger too. You already ate yours. I'm enjoying my food. Hey, Maya, your sister wants some, so give it to her. Your big sister, be nice. April wanted to have everything that's mine. Whether it's food or clothes or school supplies, she begs me for anything. I want your scarf, Maya. No, I use this one for school, and you have your own. I want that one. You're so mean. Don't be mean, Maya. Give her the scarf. But that's mine. Yay! I want those gloves too. These are too big for you anyway. No, I want them too. Maya, just give them to her. April wants them. You are a big sister, so be nice to her. My parents would never listen to me, but listen to my sister's every wish and spoiled her. I'm always forced to put up with them because I'm older. In this way. My things were taken away from me whenever April wanted. It was too painful to live with such a family, so I left home as soon as I entered university. I had to work part time to pay my tuition and live on my own. It was very hard for me to balance my part time job with my university, but I was free from the stress of that toxic family, and it was more than enough for me. After graduating from university, I successfully found a job. I even got a boyfriend, and my days were full of happiness. Then, after three years of dating, my boyfriend Jackson proposed to me. I think it's time to start thinking seriously about our future. Huh? Will you marry me, Maya? Let's make a happy family together. I was so happy to hear his proposal, but I hesitate to respond. I hadn't been in touch with my family since I left home for university. When you get married, it's a custom to see or contact both sides of the family. What's wrong? You don't want to get married? No, no, I do. It's just what I should do about contacting my family. I mean. Do I still have to invite my family to the wedding? Maybe I can't escape from the curse of my family after all. Jackson could see how I was lamenting with a gloomy look on my face. I already told him about my family, and he said, "Don't worry about that. You don't have to force yourself to call them. I wouldn't invite a family member to my wedding who can't take treat you like." Who can't treat you right? Thank you, Jackson. He always cares about me and prioritizes my feeling. I can trust him. Soon after, we decided to get married. We didn't go to my parents' house and decided to greet only his parents. But when I went to say hello to his parents, I'm so happy for you. Good job, Jackson. You are marrying such a nice girl. My father-in-law was smiling and happy with open arms. On the other hand, my mother-in-law had a stern look on her face. I don't know how she is going to be able to live as a family if she can't get along with her own family. I'm not sure who is to blame. If I only listen to one side of the situation, I don't think it's a good idea for this marriage. Mom, I know. I'm sorry.
My mother-in-law didn't approve of our marriage. I understand her point of view, and I want to marry Jackson, and I want to convince both of his parents. I decided to go to my parents' house to solve the problem. When I visited the house, they didn't even let me in, and as I expected, they were very curt. Getting married? Why should we care? You left on your own wish, so you can do whatever you want. I'm not even going to the wedding. No, please. My parents coldly treated us at the front door. Your fiance must be very fond of you, Maya. He's weird. My sister, now a college student, lives at home. She's laughing at us behind my parents. I don't care if you don't attend to the wedding. Can't you just meet my parents? No. Why should I? I don't care about her marriage. Jackson tried his best, my, but my parents refused like it was nothing. Wait, is it because you can't get married unless you introduce us to his parents? <laughs> Maya is a bitch, and we never liked her, so we don't care about her. That means you will never get married, Maya. You're such a loser. My sister laughs at me as if she enjoys my misfortune. I knew it was coming, but this is the kind of family I've come to expect. It's impossible to have a proper relationship with them. Jackson and I had no choice but to leave. When we realized that talking to them any further was not going to get us anywhere, the next day. We visited my in-laws to share the results about my parents. I am so sorry. They said they don't plan to come to the meeting or the wedding. They were so cruel and wouldn't even listen to us. Well, I guess it can't be helped then. Don't worry about that too much. I've known Maya for a long time, and I know her well, and I trust her. I want your approval, Mom. What do you say? I still don't approve of it myself, but it's your decision, so you can do whatever you want. Then we'll get married. All right, all right. Do what you want. Thank you. I'll do my best. My mother-in-law seemed my mother-in-law seems a bit upset, but I think it's safe to say she's accepted me, if possible. I wanted her to be happy with it. Soon after, I married Jackson. I became a housewife. We rented a new house and started our life together. I wanted to get to know my parents in law as well as possible. I'm home. Welcome home. You two look well. Good, good, good. Okay then. I'm gonna get our dinner ready. I'll help you. You get your fancy clothes to get dirty. Oh shoot! My mother-in-law is as cold as stern as ever. I guess it's hard to get along with her after all. There's an apron over there. Grab that and follow me. Okay, thank you. But the more I interact with her, the more I realized that she is not unreasonable or mean. If you were faithful to her, she would accept you. I made up my mind. That one day she would recognize me, and I tried my best with all my heart. But then, to my surprise, my husband disappeared within a year of our marriage. I tried to contact the company he worked at, but they say he had already quit. I reported him to the police. I reported him to the police, and my husband left a note. I can't live with you anymore. You abuse me all the time, and you don't even cook meals for me. You get hysterical because I don't make enough money. It's hard. I can't stand it. Please don't go look for me. I don't know what. I don't know what's he talking about. I'm not abusive, and I cook meals every day. 
I've never told him anything about how much money he makes. I've never been violent, not even once. I don't understand what's going on here. None of this is true. I've tried to find out where my husband went, and I've asked his co workers and friends. Everyone gave me the cold shoulder. Your husband disappeared, and it's your fault. I heard you didn't cook enough meals and behaved badly. He told me he was verbally abused on a daily basis. He sounded like he was having a mental breakdown. I guess that's what made him want to run away. It's your fault, isn't it? You are a real scumbag. Maybe he's already taken his own life. You pushed him that far. Apparently, he'd been telling his colleagues and friends that he was being treated badly by me on a daily basis. I'm sorry, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Anyway, I'm trying to track him down. Even if I knew, I'm not going to tell you. I'm being completely demonized. Not only no one is willing to help me, but everyone blames me. Why should I be blamed? I don't even know why I'm being blamed. Maybe I pushed him into a corner without realizing it? He took his life because of me? I'm so confused that I can't even make a proper decision. I didn't know what to do anymore. I couldn't even think of a way to track down his family register or have a credit agency check him out. The only people who believed in me and cared for me were my in laws. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm the reason my husband disappeared. I'm sorry. That's not true. You don't have to be so hard on yourself. Yes, he's right. It's not your fault. Thank you. I know you've been working hard. I know that you're not a flake. I know what you are. You are a sincere person. Thank you for saying that. My mother in law accepted me through our marriage. If you were in need for further help, why don't you come here and live with us? Really? Maya, you're a family now. You don't have to worry about it. If it's okay with you, it's okay with us. I can't believe it. I'd love to. It's hard to pay the it's hard to pay the rent on my own, and I have nowhere to stay. My in laws are willing to let me stay with them. I bowed deeply and thanked them with tears in my eyes. I really can't thank my in laws enough. Twenty years later, my aging father in law passed away. I wish I could have talked with you more. My father in law was mild manners, positive, and a little bit mischievous. From the first time I greeted him, he accepted me with open arms. Memories of my father in law keeps coming to my mind, one after another, and tears of sadness flow down on my face. A few days after my father in law passed away, my relatives gathered at my parents' house and held a memorial service for him. With the sadness was still fresh in my mind. Then, to my surprise, my husband, who had been missing for a long time, showed up. It's been a long time. He came home as if nothing had happened, and we rolled our eyes. Jackson, where were you? I'm actually made a family with your sister. According to his story, 20 years ago, my sister secretly contacted my husband and they had a series of secret meetings and became very close. She became pregnant with his child and made it look like I was responsible for his disappearance. My sister wanted everything that was mine. But I never expected that she would want my husband too. My parents knew about it, but they were so protective of my sister. 
that they cooperated with my husband and sister in his disappearance. They were investigating my movements on a regular basis. They were the ones who told my parents that my father-in-law had passed away. Thank you for taking care of my parents. We're going to go through a lot of procedures and stuff. I've decided to take this opportunity to move back home with my family. So, you can do whatever you want, Maya. I'm saying you don't have to take care of my parents anymore. What? You want me to leave this house? I've been treated so coldly by so many people that it's no wonder I dropped my husband away. You don't know how long I have been blaming myself. I couldn't believe that it was all a lie. A lie. So my husband would live happily with my sister and a child. I was so stunned and I couldn't think straight. Don't be ridiculous. It's beyond selfish of you to come back with her after all this time. My mother-in-law yelled at them in anger. Maya is my daughter. I adopted her. We've been living together as a family. What? My in-laws proposed adoption with me, so she is now my adoptive mother. I know you came back for your father's inheritance. My daughter filed for dissolution of marriage with you after declaring you missing. Only my daughter and I are entitled to the inheritance. Oh, no. No way. His face turns pale and he is in panic. But as long as you are alive, we have to withdraw the missing person's declaration. Then you have your inheritance and we can redistribute it. Well then, the sparkle returned to my ex-husband's face. But my mother was merciless. But that doesn't mean you'll get any money. You've caused my daughter so much pain and trouble. And then you come back here just for the money. I'm here to make amends for raising amends with such stupidity. I'm giving all my inheritance to my daughter as compensation for the divorce and a share of the property. What? My ex-husband was surprised that he couldn't say anything. It's been 20 years. But the adultery was only discovered now. She has the right to demand alimony from you for your infidelity. Considering that, at the time of your disappearance, she was emotionally scarred from being slandered for something she didn't do or say. I'm afraid that even if you were I'm afraid that even if you were included in the redistribution, it may not be enough to offset the loss. No. No, no, no. My ex-husband was flustered and clung to me. I'm sorry. I'll come back to you. So no alimony, please. Then, a man stepped forward and intervened between my ex-husband and me. If you have been doing research, you know she is remarried. She's my wife now. The man is my husband. I've already remarried and had a child. If you present my declaration of disappearance, your, disil your disillusion of marriage is invalid. Your marriage is invalid. Revoking a declaration of disappearance does not affect the validity of any act done in good faith between the time of the declaration and the revocation. In other words, if you were married without knowing your ex-husband's alive, your marriage to your new spouse takes precedence. The remarriage is valid. The ex-husband flinched at the words of my husband, who calmly pointed out. I, too, was stunned and angered by my ex-husband's overly selfish insistence. You came this far, and when you find out you had to pay alimony, you flipped out. How much more of a scumbag do you have to be? Even if my remarriage is invalid, there is no way I would want to go back together with you. I'll go to court and do whatever it takes to get a divorce. 
There's nothing he can do now. Let's... let's go back in time. Forget I ever showed up here. I'm already dead. My ex-husband turned on his heel to run away. And my husband grabbed him and said, It's absurd to try to run away. Write a letter of intent. The ex-husband signed a letter of intent promising to pay alimony. We also made him sign, my sister and my ex-parents, as co-signers and gave us their address and contact information. After that, when I asked my ex-husband and my sister for alimony, they said they couldn't pay. We have debts to pay and we can't afford to pay this much. We helped April and Jackson with money too. So we can't any money anymore. My ex-husband, who is missing, can't even get a decent job. It seems neither of them can afford it. They deserve what they get. When I told them I would appeal to the court, they asked me to reduce the amount. I'll pay you. I just need you to reduce the amount or wait for me to pay it. Please. I'm telling you, I can't pay this much. Reduce the amount. They started coming to me every day, like they were harassing me. It's so depressing. I told them that if they insisted any longer, I would report to the police, and they finally paid me in one lump sum. My ex-parents had to use the father's early retirement money to pay for everything, so they were completely broke. Of course, they asked me for help. We can't afford to live like this, so please help, Maya. Please, we're family after all, aren't we? No, we're not. You're strangers to me. I have a family now. Please, don't say that. We're your children's grandparents. If you come near my family, I'll do whatever it takes to protect them. I will call the police. Don't you ever contact me again. I warned them and blocked them from my contact. How can you say such a thing after you and my sister betrayed me that way? How insensitive. I'll never have to see those scambags again. As for me, I'm living a peaceful and happy life with my real family. Mommy, is this how you whisk eggs? Yes, yes, you're doing great. It's nice to have a meal prepared by my grandchild. I've been making lots more for you, Mom and Grandma. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it, sweetheart. I'm so grateful to live with a family that trusts each other. I will continue to do my best for my family with all my heart.